I'm Dr. Fred Kirsten. I'm Fred, and uh, I'm going to be talking to you about uh, the Crow Book and cloud inclusion in the music classroom. And it's sort of interesting why I got going with this topic. You know, I nearly went to jail because of this, okay? Uh, I have looked at 72 different Chromebooks in the last year, okay? And so my modus of operandi is uh, to usually go to Walmart or Best Buy or one of these organizations and go down because I can take my QR code, you know, and get all this good information about the Chromebooks. Uh, so anyway, I was over in Walmart and I was looking at this Chromebook and I wanted to see something about the ports on the back. Okay, so uh, I pulled it out of the, the uh, format they had, these little clamps on the thing, and I pulled the cords out. Well, apparently they have a security system there. Okay, <laughs> so all of a sudden all these bells and whistles go off, and the security people descend upon me, and two salespeople and that, and uh, they made me pick out my ID, and uh, I thought next thing they were going to do is to take a picture of me, you know, and put me on the most wanted, the technology most wanted. So anyway, this is what I've done with this presentation. I have really got involved with this because I wanted to work with Chromebook because I'm using it in our classes at BU with our graduate teachers. So I'm going to try to cover with you a ton of stuff today. First of all, I'm working off the Chromebook. Uh, and that is sort of an exciting in a different direction because it's a lot different than working with a MacBook Pro, all right? Believe me. Uh, it does the way you are working in here. You're going to see some of the things that I'm working off because I'm working off a huge file. You're going to see some delays that I would not get on a uh, regular uh, computer if I was working on PC or Mac. So be aware that as you start to do it, if you, how many people do a lot of presentations off of CB? Okay, if you have, play with a little bit before you get going, okay, because it can turn your hair gray, and then you have to start dyeing it like I do. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to talk, give you a lot of tons of stuff. Uh, I'm going to talk about various tools. I'm going to show you opportunities that you can work with it in your specific subjects. I'm also going to get involved with the following, notation, audio editing, recording, music theory, ear training, video creation, video editing, creativity, practice, and then I'm going to try to show you some curriculum presentation tools that you can use specifically with your kids, and I'm going to give you some examples that my kids all have been able to work with. Then I'm going to tell you how to select a CB for purchase without getting arrested in Walmart. Uh, and after that, then I'm going to get involved with Google Play, and I've given you a very strong location library that you can follow <laughs> up on. Uh, it's up on my page uh, that I will show you, uh, and it's also on a QR code that gets to the page that I'm working with. And also, hopefully today, there will be a wonderful movie of me, uh, Cecil D. DeMille Presents, uh, that's being recorded right now. Uh, so anyway, uh, a lot of different things that I'll try to give you with information to follow up on. As I started to work with this topic, I became really scared because I got an article that was done by the uh, New York Times, how Google took over the classroom. And I think this is really unique because I never thought about it and saw how it was coming because today more than half of our primary and secondary kids are working with Google Apps. That's 30 million children, which I think is really very awesome. It's now the powerhouse in American schools. How many people use Chromebooks in here? Yay, okay, I can see where we're going. Okay, more than half of the mobile devices shipped to schools are Chromebooks. And Google now is prioritizing training kids and working with teamwork, CoLab. You'll hear CoLab all day. Big buzzword, not only with public schools, but now at the college level also. Dollar signs. Chromebook makes $30 per device by selling services out to the kids that are working in the schools. A lot of money. And there's a concern about this because starting kids very early gets them going in a particular set. I don't totally believe that because I think our kids are starting to be so tech oriented that they can build out into a lot of directions. 
these kids have lived with this stuff since probably two and three, and so they are very savvy. But this is a direction that's a concern. And thinking about the amount of money involved, when I started doing my major part of this project last October, at that time, Google was part of the Alphabet Company, and they were only worth $836 billion at that time. Two weeks ago, I looked back at the same thing. Chrome, the Alphabet Company now is over worth over $1 trillion. That's a lot of money, okay, when you start to think about what's happening. So, but I think the most important thing, which I think is so exciting, there's a lot of different tools that you can build off. And as I work with my kids, many of my kids are now in our uh, online doctoral program, where we, they don't have to, they can start their doctoral program and continue everything online. And I'm trying to build them into things that are being worked with technology they can take immediately back to their classroom. And one of the things that I found as I start to get involved with notation is Note Flight Learn. Anybody work with Note Flight Learn in here? Very good. Okay, it's more than just doing notation. There are fantastic things you can build off it because you can do a lot of different types of collaboration back and forth. For example, you can interact, you can create, you can share, and you listen to the things that you are kids that can be able to be built from. There are various activity templates that you can work with. Uh, you can see all their assignments as they develop. And now there's a new direction, and I just included that in our technology course that we're running at with BU. I'm working with live audio recording. So you can get involved in your notation and work the live audio recording aspect. Anybody work with that as yet? Okay, that is something to look at. There is now also direct integration with other learning management systems, LMSs, and I'm going to show you that in a second. You can see the kids' notation, you can listen in, and you can assess their performance. They can play in, and then you can record and have them listen to what you might think about for your comments. And so you can send information back. So let's say if you wanted to go into a teaching scenario situation, you can work with a collaborative composition lesson. The kids can work in twos, threes, small groups, and you can go into what is called a collaboration library. Now, what you can do is put your assignments into that library, which is very cool. Or you can work off various templates. You can work off templates, for example, of examples from Bach, Beethoven, any of the major composers. Or there are also various composition aspects that they have built in so you can build into that lab. I also, as I started getting involved with this, looked at notation, I worked with flat. How many people work flat in here? Yes, okay, this is sort of interesting because it's being integrated in uh, to the Google Classroom. And uh, you can work with one-to-one -one computers back and forth if you want. I thought it was sort of interesting that the Fairfield School District in Illinois, they start their kids working with flat in the middle school, and then they go all the way through the secondary school. So the kids can work all the way through on various composition, composition libraries that they have, and then they can work with flat. And if you notice the way it's set up, all these are various assignments that these kids have created. So a kid in the middle school might want to work with somebody at a more advanced age. You can build that in with flat, which is very, very unique. Uh, so while I made my own page, the thing I thought was really nice about this is I can drag and drop notation all into my score. I teach the Introduction to the Sibelius course for Boston University, and I work with teachers predominantly, and many of them have a big problem if you're working with Sibelius Ultimate or if you want to get involved with the newest version of Finale, which is 26, Put it in notation. You've all had the same problem, but I have too. So that working with flat is really unique because you can just drag and drop these in so younger children could be able to compose directly into the score. The nice thing of working with flat is do they put a MIDI file up in the cloud and then people, two or three or four people can work at the same time and they get something like this. A powerful music score editor inside your browser in Waste Music Creation and bring it to the future. You can drop notes with a click and go further in your melody. 
Even if you lose your network connection, you can keep on working with our offline feature. It will synchronize your call when you go online again. You can invite your friends to work with you on your music sheet and enjoy the real-time improvements that foster the efficiency of your bandwidth. If that's not enough for you, you can start the hangout chat with the collaborators and have fun with them. When your composition is done, share it with the community that gathers more than 300,000 musicians and music lovers. Very exciting to be able to work with you, start on the free version and build from there. Obviously, when we get involved with Audacity and audio editing, this is the first thing that everybody thinks about because it's a freebie. Unfortunately, you cannot download the program or work with it <coughs> off of CB, but you can work with it online. Uh, so now Audacity is up online, big problem with it. How many people have worked Audacity? Okay, how many people are trying to work it on the new version of Catalina that just came out as the operating system with uh, working on your uh, Mac? Okay, you're going to have a problem with it. Be aware of it. The newest version of Audacity will not run on uh, Catalina. So if you are updating your Mac, uh, make sure that if you want to keep working with Audacity until they come up with a fix, that uh, you uh, stay with the older version, okay? I just found out uh, 25 of my students complained. <laughs> so I found that out when it came down because we're working with it now. But however, you can work with Audacity online. You can go to Authidocs and then you can be able to work immediately with it and you get something like this. You can work with uh, Audacity online if you want. If you'll notice, I've set it up so that I access the site. And if I want to do some work with audio, I can do the normal editing of the files and builds from there. Big problem of this, sometimes this does run a little bit slow. So this is something to be aware of. Obviously, Audacity is fantastic to be able to work with online, and you can build off it if you want to work with Pro. You are working with Offidocs. Now, I've given you the site in the handout. Be aware that Offidocs will allow you then to be able to work with Word. Uh, you can then be work with Office Docs. You can work with uh, uh, PowerPoint. Uh, there's a lot of other things out there. There's a sweep of uh, video aspect that you can work with, uh, and there's OpenShot Video Editor and a number of these things. So that site is available to you. Be aware of it because you can work directly into the type of programs you don't have to work with substitutes. I have been working with Soundation for a good 10 years. Anybody work Soundation in here? Okay, Soundation is available to you. It lives entirely in the cloud. You can record directly into Soundation. There's an automation tracks, any of the big powerful DAWs, it's just as equivalent to. So I really like it a lot. You can do EQ and so forth. The reason I bring it up is you can then work with Google Hangout with uh, the uh, Soundation. They are now going to make it a little bit stronger. They will allow you to be able to work more synchronously because you can work back and forth. But be aware of Soundation if you have a chance to look at it. You can start with a freebie and then build from there. Another audio aspect that you can work with is called Audio Joiner. This is totally up in the cloud. Uh, you can do a lot of merging of files. You can do some type of uh, audio editing and then be able to export out. And it looks pretty much like this. Hi right, folks, this is uh, using Audio Joiner, which is sort of an interesting uh, online opportunity to work with audio. It's sort of limited, as you'll notice, but uh, you can use it on the Chromebook and certainly it is up online and free. So what you can do then, if you want to put together a couple clips, for example, I've just got an audio clip open and I'm going to join them, as you can see, in just a second. Uh, so that what I can do is put the two clips up online and then cross fade. And, and so then what you can do is uh, you can uh, cross fade and export out and you'll notice there are all different types of formats you can use, MP3. Uh, and, and, and so forth. 
So this is available to you. I thought you might be able to uh, look at it and work with it. How many people work Soundtrap in here? Okay, good. Soundtrap is the newest direction. Everybody's working with it now. Uh, it's a DAW, a digital audio workstation. Uh, it's, many people find it's uh, easier to work with than GarageBand. The nice thing about it is you can work totally online with it. So you don't have to be limited to just working off the Mac system. Uh, you can work with any type of device all over the world. So I opened up my page. The nice thing about it is, too, they have a lot of different tutorials that are there that your kids can complete and learn about audio principles. They're good. Okay, because I've been doing audio since I think before it was created. Uh, but anyway, uh, it works very nicely and they get little symbols that you can have them to complete as you go. So anyway, what you can do is you can do collaborations off these. Uh, this, it allows you to see your various projects. You can see my projects that I've got up. You can invite your friends in by social media if you want. You could also go by genre. For example, let's say you wanted to find people you wanted to communicate with guitar or uh, piano or whatever. And so then you could go to one of their sites and you have a hot icon meaning that you put up a little audio example of the way you compose or the types of things you have. So the persons then can be able to select that and uh, be able to listen in and work with them. I mentioned there was a lot of neat things that you could do is uh, working back and forth between uh, a number of these various in the cloud opportunities. Soundtrap and NoteFlight have an interaction possibility. Uh, John Malinzak, who's president of TIME and also he's managing director of NoteFlight, has got a fantastic site up that shows you how you can work back and forth between them. And if you could do this, it's just phenomenal all the things you can do. For example, you could take your soundtrap song as NoteFlight notation and then let somebody come out and play it right away. Okay, great for motivation. Uh, you can remix the audio of your various note flight score with various soundtrap instruments. So you're going back and forth between the notation and actual sounds. You can export out various MIDI drum parts from uh, soundtrap into note flight and copy them into existing scores. Has anybody done any of these things? Okay, look at these if you wanted. You can use them with almost any age, uh, starting with uh, grade seven on up. So there's a lot of things that you can build uh, with that if you want to go that direction. So what I did with my students, and I'm bringing this to you because you could probably start around eight, grade eight or nine if you're working with Soundtrap uh, because of all the possibilities. So what I had my students do, they had to come up with a two-minute composition. And what they had to use is Soundtrap. You can be able to record into it. You can then use the various loops and all the various sounds are there. And uh, they had to use the various effects that were available in Soundtrap. So one of my students decided to combine a banjo part with hip-hop beats. And there are some sounds in there with hip-hop. And he collaborated with another student who recorded in a Banzuri flute obligato. Another student worked with the various synth loops and things at the end. And then another student added various drum and bass loops from the Soundtrap library. And so they built these all things in, in, and then they added a voice line. And they got it from the Loopmasters free sample pack of old movie dialogues. And they built these things in, and then they recorded a banjo part. Okay, it sounds complicated, but it's not. It's just a lot of layering of tracks in. And so what they got been put together for two minutes was what they called the banjo hip hop subconscious, and it sounds like this.
you can see there's a lot of different possibilities you could do is building this in if uh, you want to go that direction. Recording. Uh, you could do a lot of recording on your CB. Some people think it's a little bit limited, but it's not. Uh, if you go to uh, the recording tools online, they'll give you a lot of examples. I'm sure you probably have worked uh, with SoundCloud uh, and uh, voice recorders. Those are very good. Uh, but there's one that you should be aware of, Twisted Wave. Has anybody worked with the Twisted Wave app in here? Uh, it's uh, pretty unique. I used to use it on my uh, iPad, and it's very, very, it's only costs about six dollars but it's really fantastic because you can pull in all different types of files and formats record in and then what you can do is you can do a lot of different editing with it with the various files you've laid in if you notice I put these in and uh, all the various things I can do with it and just let me show you exactly what it can happen with a little video this way is really a unique opportunity to work online you can work with it in your Chromebook you can then be able to work with all different types of audio editing just as you work with professional DAW software. So I'm going to drop in a file and you can see what it looks like uh, as it opens up. <coughs> and then you have all different types of opportunities. You can send it right onto Google Drive, which is really fantastic. You can do all different types of editing. You can select the various aspects working within the uh, file itself. You can lay in markers. You can do all types of audio effects that are all there. You can then do some editing out and then be able to do cutting. And then you can loop from there if you want to go. So it's a very fantastic thing to be able to work with Chromebook and I commend it to Definitely so. It really is very worthwhile. If any of the things I'm talking about that, it will really be helpful to you. A music theory, Teoria. Anybody work with Teoria in here? Teoria is really good. What do you use yours with for with your students? Um, I'll use it a lot for interval training and choirs. Yes, very good. And and uh, I worked with a, a person who is blind uh, last year. Uh, he is a professor at Brigham Young University. And uh, he is doing improvisation. He teaches an improvisation course. He's unbelievable on keyboard. And one of his directions was to try to work with kids with more advanced jazz chords. And uh, being able to work with Teoria is something if you are working with especially high school kids or people who are out in the community who are a little bit more advanced, Teoria is there for you. And I think it's a very fantastic thing to work with. Anybody work with hook pad? Hookpad is great for working with younger children uh, because what they can do is they can drag and drop in, they can do a lot of different things with chord sequences, they can start to listen and see the orientation, they can build compositions, and they can also work with notation and you get something like this. An example of hook pad, which is sort of interesting, if you notice you can play in various chords if you want, so I'll play it through. And it's really nice for working with younger children because it's so easy to be able to build back and forth. Ear training, I try to find a couple examples for you that could be used at very younger age and then be able to build towards older kids. Music notation training is really unique because you can work with just simple identification notes that kids can work with online, or they can get involved with chords, or they can listen back and forth if they want to just do isolate out particular two or three different intervals and work it for ear training. And you get something like this. Music notation training allows you to work with single notes online. As you can see, I can be able to then put in the notes as I wish, and C and C, and so forth. And then if you wish, you could also work with chords, so that you could be able to identify these chords that are up and higher and so forth. So this is available to you in both free and obviously the pro version.
where you have to spend some money. And what you can do is isolate two or three of these chords out. So if you want to go back and forth and listen for various qualities, major and minor, uh, and so forth. Also be aware of Oralia Musician. Everybody's probably worked these, but there is a cloud edition you can build off. I want to show you some curriculum presentation uh, tools that you can work with that are specifically oriented from Chrome. One of these is called Slides. Anybody work Slides in here? Yay. How do you like that? Okay, it's, it's, it's similar, very similar to PowerPoint. It's unique to be able to work with Chrome. Uh, it works as the same type of uh, direction. You can lay in the slides on the left <laughs> side, and you can build, and you get something like this. This is just a fast little video on slides. Obviously, this is available uh, through Google. Uh, it works out pretty much just like working with PowerPoint. You notice I just put in three or four slides, as you can see. I can then go into present mode if I want. I can start my presentation. And it's really a neat as that. I love the little pointer. You know, you see how the pointer sort of slips around the screen. And then you can go through your presentation. I decided to show you some of my collegians that I drove during the summer. Sorry about that. You can see how these slides can be built. So you can work with it. It's a freebie there that's uh, good. And, you, and it, it works pretty nicely if you want. Uh, how many people work Powtoon? Okay, great. Have you worked Powtoon? Uh, okay, Powtoon is sort of interesting. Uh, it's the same type of direction as you work uh, with uh, PowerPoint. You notice I'm laying in the slides on the left side. It's pretty powerful. Uh, you can put a voice line underneath it, uh, and uh, then you can pull in types of all types of pictures and audio and video and so forth. Then it has all different types of transition things that can go through. If they say that it is a, a collaborative mode, I don't agree with it, okay? Because it's pretty much asynchronous. You have to send your file to one person, they work with it, and then send it back. However, it has a lot of great opportunities. Because what you could do is not only you could work with it and sort of as export as a PPT file, but you could also export as an MPEG-4 video. So this is a project that one of my girls did in her class. She worked with her high school kids, and she worked with a commercial as a format. Anybody do a commercial with their kids as a way of doing? What you can do with it, if you want to use it as a project with your students, especially at secondary level, is you can come up with a commercial to sell something or some aspect. So what my kid did, uh, she used iReal Pro. Anybody work with <laughs> iReal Pro? Okay, yeah, great. iReal Pro is a good, uh, really fantastic, especially if you're doing improvise, if you want to play uh, and do some accompanying and improvise behind it. Uh, so what she did was she had worked with her students. They came up with the script. And uh, then the kids came up with the various pictures that they developed, and then they put the audio in, and they got something that comes like this. This is Nikki. She plays guitar in her school's jazz band, but doesn't like practicing all by herself at home. Isn't it frustrating when you want to play with a group, but you can't? Wouldn't it be great to have the entire jazz band at home with you anytime you wanted to practice? Your parents wouldn't like that, though, because they'd have to clear out the whole living room, buy a bunch of pizzas to feed them all, and warn the neighbors. But there is an easier solution. <laughs> I'm Real Pro. With I'm Real Pro, Nikki can play along with a real jazz band that takes up no floor space and doesn't eat anything. Nikki can either import charts from I'm Real Pro's forms or compose your own. Simply tap the pencil icon to begin creating your own score. Use the pop-up keyboard to enter your chord symbols, beat marks, and other symbols needed. Don't want a jazz boss and other group? Tap it to select from a dozen and other groovy groups available. Hate playing with lots of flats? Tap the treble clef and D clef in the bottom right corner and choose your key. Want to take some solos? Tap the three X at the bottom of the screen and select the number of repetitions you want. Once your score is just the way you like it, grab your instrument, tap the play button and start jamming. Tutorial to learn how to share your work with others in iReal Pro's forms. To get iReal Pro for your iPad, go to the App Store. It's only $12.99, much less than the cost of one piece. 
So I thought it was really cool because uh, she was able to collab. Her kids are working are at a private school, okay? But it's a very simple thing to be able to do, nice format to be able to work with because your kids can write out the, uh, the script and come up with things and then pull in some types of uh, the technology. I use it a lot of times uh, just to sell my classes. Canva is another direction. Anybody work with Canva yet? Okay, cool, great. Uh, I, Canva will allow you to produce slides for your students. You can also export a video. So I decided to go another route. I decided to export out as PDF. So the one I made for today, if you'll notice, I put it into a PDF file. And so that is the information that can be sent out to your student if you want to go uh, and send things out that way. How many people work Flipgrid? Okay, Flipgrid is another thing. It's developed at the University of Minnesota. It's a private asynchronous video communication source. And what you can do with it is you can develop some type of a communication with your students. A grid is nothing more than a communication. It can be in text format or it can be in video going back and forth. And this is an example if you might want to set up with a class with your students. And then here is a question that I posed to my students. So we'll take a look at this. And here is a link to that specific question. So I'm going to click on that so you can see what my students saw. Um, here is a question. Watch the following video and comments. So this is a YouTube video that I shared that had just come out from Khan Academy about learning. So this is an intro discussion uh, board type of question. And I wanted students to. Uh, respond either here within, um, within Flipgrid, or I wanted them to respond in the discussion board. And so some of them chose to do that. You can see what the question was here as well. So let me hop back to this real quick. And this is an example of what a student response would look like. I believe that I'm a hands-on learner, and I really like learning to so you can see what you can do. You can build this out uh, and then have a communication going back and forth if you want. I've tried to emphasize through here a lot of videos, okay? Not because I want it to be, uh, you know, Hollywood squares or something like that. But anyway, uh, showing you the various things you can do with screen videos because these are coming. Yes, sir? Where do the videos get hosted from? I saw that, you, that, you had, that the question was posted on YouTube but our school blocks YouTube. Yeah, you can use it. Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, there's a, you know, the next presentation I'd like to do is on security procedures in schools for handling the, that type of question. Yeah, there, many schools are going to have a problem with this, OK? Uh, uh, that's something that's available. You know, you've got to think through those procedures. But it's a very good question. Some people can use it. Some people can't. You know, so that's a direction. But that's a very good point that he brought up. Uh, and uh, so anyway, as I started to get going on the video casting, a lot of things that are being done with videos, and I've tried to show you a number of these as I've gone. One of these is Screencastify. Uh, this is available as a simple one to be able to make your screen videos. Another one is called We Video. Uh, they only give you f uh, free for five minutes a month, okay? So <laughs> not very much uh, time to work with. Uh, you can also work with Loom Video for screencasting. And then there's also Screencast-O-Matic. Uh, you can make a lot of different things it off from in that direction. And uh, Screencast-O-Matic, I'll just give you a little example of what you can do with it. Hi folks, I am working with Screenomatic. Allows you to have the picture of yourself in the corner. Sharing opportunity for sharing the screen of your video. So I'll go into MSN to see what's going on today. Uh, you can see I have a tape today. Uh, but you can do all the types of opportunities with this uh, to be able to make screen videos. So if you're going to be working with these things, you're going to be working with a new file format. I decided to add this in just so you can improve your techie uh, backgrounds. WebM files. Anybody know what WebM? OK, <laughs> WebM is going to be something you're going to see more and more as you work with the cloud and also with Chromebooks. Because what it does is it allows for the file to be very small. It has a compression ratio now of 47% smaller. Many of us were working with MPEG-4 videos. 
and obviously these files are large because as you're starting to get involved with the Chromebook and starting to get involved with more and more cloud opportunities, which is what everything is going to, you're going to be involved with WebM. Big problem with WebM. Right now, your major software for editing will not work with it, okay? So if you're working uh, with Premiere or you're working with Final Cut Pro or some of those pieces of software, they won't work with it. However, I've given you a couple sites if you want to follow up on this. You can work with Cloud Convert, which is a video converter which will convert your videos from WebM to MPEG-4. And you can also work with a site called Online Video Cutter. So what you could do is take your WebM files, put it in there, and do some editing on the ends. And you get something like this. Online Video Cutter allows you to be able to edit the work with WebM files. As yet, there is not uh, an awful lot of uh, software that's available to work with WebM in terms of editing. But as you can see, I can then start my file. Hi folks, I am working with Screenomatic. So you can see how it works. It's really a pretty cool. And I can very simply be able to change the ends on the file or be able to do some small editing in the middle. As you can see, I can flip it around and so forth and so forth. So that is there. Now, one thing I would mention to you, if you have to work with WebM, you can go to Mac X Video Converter. It will take your files. I tried not to talk about software because I wanted to stay totally with a Chromebook, okay? And obviously, you're not going to be downloading on a Chromebook. But this is available if you want to build off those files. I wanted to just mention to you, you've all heard MPEG all your lives, okay? MPEG is a group of individuals called the Motion Picture Expert Group. Okay, so you could go out with this wonderful piece of technology trivia, okay, from this presentation. MPEG-1, MPEG-2, MPEG-3 is made by this group of individuals. They meet worldwide three or four times a year and come up with new types of file format. So the next time you don't, don't talk about MPEG, you know what that specifically is about. Find a Chromebook. As I say, I will work with 72 of them, okay, I almost got arrested for that. Uh, but anyway, some of the things that I wanted to look at was what I should get if I had to recommend it to a kid. And so I set myself a, a base price of $250. And I got the following things that I looked at and things I recommend to you. Most of your Chromebook are going to have approximately 4 gigs of RAM. You are probably also going to get 32 gigs of storage. Uh, so if you're going to buy one of these things and you're going to be looking at them, the most important thing you want to do is have ports. You want to have a port that will be a USB-C <coughs> port. You want a 3.1 port for, for USB, and you want a micro SD port, OK? Why? Because what you can do then is put all different types of compositions and programs and projects on your machine. This project is uh, approximately one gig in size. It's huge because you see all the videos that I'm working with back and forth. I am able to run that whole thing off one of my little uh, chips that's going on today. Uh, so this is something to be aware of. Uh, you're going to find that your Google Chrome will work on a 4G of RAM, okay, which is running pretty good today. You'll see once in a while I've got a glitch or it hangs up, but I'm doing pretty well with it. If you're buying it for kids, look at the size and the weights and the student ages you're working with. The things that I've looked at, I've looked at 72 of them, I've lifted them, hoisted them, and whatever. Some of them are pretty clunky. So be aware of that when you're starting to look for your kids. Also look for durability and ruggedness. Many of the kids are putting them in backpacks and so forth, so these things can get a lot of wacky around. One thing that I found was key quality. Some of the keys that I found were pretty spongy. So this is something to look at if you are working with it. And you can work with the various Android apps that are there, and now they're going Linux on some of the various machines. You can go high end up to $1,200. You can get down to as low as I did mine uh, to uh, $250. But you can build with these things if you want. 
If you buy a machine and want to put in some of these little drives, get yourself a USB Type C uh, drive, and you will have fantastic opportunity to run the various files. You don't have to do Dropbox. You know what I mean by Dropbox, where you're having to uh, take your files from one machine to another. Just pull out your chip and move back and forth between them. And if you want to get one of these little uh, micro SD cards, you want to get a Type 10 card. Because if you get a Type 3, and you'll get some cheap ones, they come out of SanDisk. If you get a Type 3 card, it will not be able to transfer your material over very quickly. Uh, locating and selecting apps, uh, two places to look. Google Play Store, how many people work off Google Play? Okay, yeah, that's a great site. It's got a lot of videos that you can work with. And also uh, the Chrome Web Store. Okay, a lot of good things there to uh, look at. Uh, Chromebook Basics, I'm giving you a site coming off the EdTech and Mobile Learning. And I think it's really cool because they've got 10 important things you should know about your Chromebook. If I was working with it, I would share it with my kids because that will give them some type of background and also parents who may be purchasing these uh, type of devices. Uh, also, uh, as you start to get involved uh, with looking for other opportunities for younger children, look at common sense education because they have all different types of things for working with younger children. Uh, there are things for uh, working with uh, Sesame Street and Elmo's musical uh, locations and things of that nature. But be aware that they are both uh, ready and there uh, for you. Getting involved with creativity. Uh, how many people have worked off the Chrome Music Lab? Okay, Chrome Music Lab is really fun for the kids to be able to work with back and forth. They can work with various elements of music, rhythm, uh, uh, melody, and so forth. And you get uh, examples that you can build like, like this. Chrome Music Lab, you can see there are all different types of opportunities. So let's just select one and put rhythm, and you will notice as it opens up that we will be able to see the various aspects of percussion that are available. So you can then click on these things if you want to build them, and then you can build various types of uh, rhythm that you can make if you want. And uh, you can use other different types of instruments, as you can see. Let's just give you another example of what you can do. I sort of like working with the arpeggios. Uh, you can see exactly this opens up. One thing that I thought was really quite unique was working on practice. And how many people are guitar people in here? Uh, the guitar I thought was really unique. If you go to Music Prodigy, it gives you a chance for kids to be able to work in and be able to do some practice online. And it's aimed specifically at the car and it's uh, gives you an example of what's available for evaluation. Hi, I'm Mike. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I use Music Prodigy to track my students' progress. Uh, first, they'll click on classes to view all the classes that have been shared with them. Uh, let's use scales for guitar as an example. And let's go down to Bolton. And here they can preview the sheet music and hit play to play the music. So here it will track the performance with red note, green note feedback in real time, tracking their rhythm and their pitch. There are two modes, assessment mode, which only gives you a metronome, and record your audio, and the tempo is fixed. In practice mode, they can hear reference track of the part, or they can hear an accompaniment, they can do loop, they can change the tempo, and uh, lots, lots of options here in practice mode. Let's go ahead and go back to assessment mode and play through the piece. All right, so it tracked about 95% of it, and let's go ahead and save the score. Now you can view the report of your performance. And you can compare it also to an audio file in case there's any discrepancies. Here's, let's check out how the report looks. So it has some info on it at the top, and then if you scroll down, you can look note for note and how you did. All right, hope that helps. Now, see you around.
And you can see there's a lot of opportunities for guitar players, which I think was specific. I like that very much. Uh, I mentioned working with the Google Play Library. You can put up 50,000 songs into Google if you want. So there's all different types of possibilities for teaching. Okay, they have them available. Most people are able to then go up on this for free and be able you can share various music aspects with them. But all you have to do is drag and drop in. You don't have to go and have a Chromebook. You can come from almost any type of uh, opportunity. Operation. So, I've given you a ton of stuff, okay? Lots of things in the cover uh, that you can work with the Chromebook. I've given you a location library up on the uh, up in the internet. You can follow up on that, and you'll uh, be able to uh, get some of the information that I've given you. I want to commend two people for you. One of these young ladies is right next door, uh, Katie Wardrobe. Uh, she is uh, has a lot of great things up on uh, working with uh, the Chromebook, and also another person that maybe you have run into, Amy Burns. Uh, past president of TIME, a uh, phenomenal uh, site for working with uh, talking specifically about uh, the Chromebook. Uh, so thank you very, very much for uh, sitting through a lot of information. I've given you a ton and a half of uh, stuff uh, that you can follow up on. See if you can get the digital format of my handout because you'll have a lot of things to follow up on if you want as you go forward. TIME has done so much for 25 years, great opportunities for learning aspects of technology, and uh, a lot of things to be able to do if you are a member with it. So thank you very much for coming to my presentation.